a giant comet with a diameter of almost 200 kilometers, is heading towards the inner solar system at extreme velocity from the outer reaches. In 10 years' time, it will fly by the Earth. That is, in January 2031, we'll see it. An enormous comet named Bernardinelli Bernstein. This is the largest registered object that has ever come to our planet from the Oort cloud. This cloud is the most distant part of our solar system, a spherical shell made up of trillions of icy comets that completely surrounds our solar system. At any moment, any one of them could get knocked out and start heading towards us. And whether it's a small shard of ice or a giant comet that can destroy the Earth depends on just how lucky we are in the big old space lottery. We normally rely on the protection of Jupiter, which functions something like a giant pinball bumper, preventing space objects from approaching the Earth. But this time it could be entirely different. What will happen if all the comets from the Oort cloud made their way towards the Earth? How could a nuclear explosion protect us from a meteor strike? And how is it that we're so lucky to have the Earth unmolested and undestroyed by a giant meteorite after all these years? So in 2031, we're about to meet the largest comet ever known to humankind. Let's figure out where it came from and why it's heading towards the inner solar system. According to scientists' calculations, a million and a half years ago, comet Bernardinelli Bernstein was 0.6 light years away from the Sun in the Oort cloud. The Oort cloud is a sphere of predominantly icy planetesimals around the solar system. Though considered to be part of the solar system, it actually lies within interstellar space, unaffected by the solar wind. For reference, it takes sunlight an average of eight minutes to reach the Earth, and four and a half hours to reach Neptune. And it takes sunlight between 10 to 28 days to reach the Oort cloud. That's mighty far. Comet Bernardinelli Bernstein is heading towards us from the Oort cloud, but it's 10 times the size of the comets we're used to. It's traveling perpendicular to the solar system's protoplanetary disk. The comet will presumably fly into Saturn's gravitational field and then loop back again. The next time it'll be seen in our neighborhood again will be in three to four and a half million years. Most objects in the Oort cloud move randomly at various inclinations and in a plethora of different directions. But when something disturbs the orbit of one of these icy worlds, it can get ejected from the cloud and begin the long fall towards our sun. We can't predict which or when these ginormous balls of ice will come to us from the Oort cloud. These collisions and processes occur chaotically and are virtually random as far as we're concerned. But we can begin to imagine what's coming if we look at the objects from the Oort cloud that have already reached the inner solar system. In 2014, a comet called Siding Spring made a very close pass near Mars, with the two bodies coming within about 140,500 kilometers of each other. For comparison, the distance from the Earth to the Moon is three times greater. Siding Spring passed Mars at a speed of 56 kilometers per second. After this transit, Mars was left surrounded by a cloud of dust and gas for a few hours. One of the brightest comets that could be seen with the naked eye from the Earth for 18 long months also came from the Oort cloud. This was the famous and wonderfully named Hale-Bopp Comet. Beginning in May 1990, it could be seen in the Northern Hemisphere. And on April 1st, 1997, April Fool's Day, it reached perihelion, the point in its orbit nearest the Sun. At that point, it was one of the brightest objects in the sky. Comet Hale-Bopp's orbital period had been 4,200 years, but its last sojourn through the solar system altered its trajectory. The comet's orbital period was reduced by almost half to just 2,400 years. And once again, it's Jupiter that's behind everything. 
This gas giant's gravitational pull is so powerful that it significantly altered Hale-Bopp's orbit. And this wasn't the first time Jupiter encountered a comet. In 1992, it ripped comet Shoemaker-Levy to shreds with extreme violence. Two years later, all the fragments of this comet crashed into Jupiter, leaving huge dark spots on its surface. Jupiter can change the trajectory of tons of stuff, comets, asteroids, and various other space objects, thus protecting the Earth from collision. As we can see, Jupiter can be our friend and protector. But recently, NASA performed a supercomputer simulation discovering that Jupiter is more cunning and influential than just that. It can be our foe as well. We've just been lucky recently. The thing is, our Jovian neighbor can steer objects not just away from the Earth, but it can also send previously harmless objects hurtling straight for us. Jupiter could prove to be our Sauermann and suddenly move over to the dark side. But if we can no longer rely on Jupiter, how can we defend ourselves against comets that might start heading towards the Earth from the Oort cloud at any moment? If a giant comet or asteroid heads towards the Earth, we'd have only two options to fragment the object or change its trajectory. Scientists think a nuclear detonation to be the most effective approach. With just the right amount of thermonuclear energy released, an asteroid could be blown to little bits and chunks that would just burn up in the Earth's atmosphere. But there are some creatively different options. For example, to install a system of lenses and mirrors closer to the sun to focus the sun's rays on space objects. It would thus be possible to evaporate the icy substance from the surface of comets, thereby producing thrust that would alter their trajectories. We could also equip a space object with a rocket engine and send it away. Or we could even paint an asteroid white, and it would act something like a solar sail, reflecting radiation that would help push it onto a path away from the Earth. But these things take time. Sending a nuclear-armed rocket into space, or sending what would essentially be a giant, rocket-propelled spray paint can into the heavens. Therefore, it's obvious we need to develop some kind of advanced diagnostic system for dangerous space objects. Thankfully, the Atlas Observing System, Pan-STARRS telescopes, Catalina Sky Survey, and other projects all focus on observing near-Earth objects. So, do you feel safe yet? You shouldn't. All of these projects have a common drawback. They can detect objects just a few weeks before they hit the Earth. And that's not enough time to blow up a potentially dangerous comet before it hits our big blue planet. But what about the Bernardinelli-Bernstein comet? It was first discovered in 2014 as part of the Dark Energy Survey Project. And in the summer of 2021, scientists spotted a cloud of dust and gas forming on it as it was approaching the sun. Scientists believe this comet poses no threat to the Earth. Its orbit travels near Saturn's orbit. But what if we're unlucky and the comet collides with something that changes its trajectory? It turns out that any object from the Oort cloud could be potentially dangerous if it gets too close to the Earth. But what if the whole cloud collapsed and sent all its objects plunging towards the inner solar system at the same time? Sounds like something impossible. But if we're extremely unlucky, this could happen. The objects in the cloud are influenced by the tidal forces of the Milky Way. Galactic tides do deform the Oort cloud, squeezing it and pulling it towards the center of the galaxy. As a result, some number of the objects move closer to the Sun. If that tidal force gets too powerful, trillions of comets will head towards the Sun. What would happen to the Earth? It all depends on just how lucky we are. 
Most comets would probably lose the majority of their mass due to evaporation and would pose no threat to our planet. Another portion of the objects would be intercepted by Jupiter. Jupiter, named for the king of the gods, would easily smash some comets into smithereens, with some others swatted away onto new trajectories. If we're lucky, Jupiter would steer them away from the Earth, with the remaining comets burning up in our atmosphere. But if even one of them would be as big as Bernardinelli Bernstein, then such a collision would bake our planet and boil the oceans. Only those who lived deep underwater would have some chance of survival. Do you hate the heat? There is one more case scenario. The galactic tide could prove to be too powerful. If it further accelerated, the comets from the Oort cloud wouldn't be able to evaporate their mass on the journey in and all these trillions of objects would form a solid ice sphere around the center of our solar system. That said, the entire Oort cloud itself is really quite unlikely to ever tumble down on us. But what objects could next be ejected from it? This is our cosmic lottery. Let's see what we'll get this time. Maybe we'll get lucky. What do you think we could win in this Astro Lotto? Please let us know your version in the comments. And of course, subscribe to the channel and see you in the next video.